Hare Krishna, <clears throat> dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books, right here in the live studios in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just, just near the English Channel. Uh, we're trying to keep this, the vibration going, keep the transcendental sound uh, flowing uh, so that this can stay a haven and we can share that haven with as many people as possible. <coughs> Sanatana Goswami glorified the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is an incarnation of literary incarnation of Krishna, just as the Bhagavad Gita is a literary incarnation of Krishna. So therefore we chant this Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram every day to remind us of just how lucky we are to be able to hear this transcendental sound. It goes like this Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada <clears throat> O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandutita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir, of all the Supreme Lord's devotees. O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguru Man Mahadana Manistadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu tadayin atini chochata kada hanamun chagadachin mam premna rit kanta O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, today is the day we embark uh, into the text of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Classic, uh, transcendental uh, scripture. Gita Upanishad. Conversation between the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Himself, with Arjuna. Chapter 1. Observing the armies from the battlefield of Kurukshetra. As the opposing armies stand poised for battle, Arjuna, the mighty warrior, sees his intimate relatives, teachers and friends in both armies ready to fight and sacrifice their lives. Overcome by grief and pity, Arjuna fails in strength. His mind becomes bewildered and he gives up his determination to fight. Gita Mahatmya 
text 1 Dhritarasra uvacha Dharmakchetre kurukchetre Samaveda yujutsubaha Mamakak pandavas chayvam Kimakurvata sanjaya Dhritarasra said O Sanjaya, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled at the place of pilgrimage in Kurukshetra, desiring to fight, what did they do? Purport. Bhagavad Gita is the widely read theistic science summarized in the Gita Mahatmya, glorification of the Gita. There it, is, there it says, that one should read Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who is a devotee of Sri Krishna and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretation. The example of clear understanding is there in the Bhagavad Gita itself. In the way the teaching is understood hmm, by Arjuna, who heard the Gita <clears throat> directly from the Lord. If someone is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita in that line of disciplic succession without motivated interpretation, then he surpasses all studies of Vedic wisdom and all scriptures of the world. <clears throat> One will find in the Bhagavad Gita all that is contained in other scriptures. But the reader will also find things which are not to be found elsewhere. That is the specific standard of the Gita. It is the perfect theistic science because it is directly spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. The topics discussed by Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya as described in the Mahabharata, form the basic principle for this great philosophy. It is understood that this philosophy evolved on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, which is a sacred place of pilgrimage from the immemorial, immemorial time of the Vedic age. It was spoken by the Lord when he was present personally on this planet for the guidance of mankind. The word Dharmakchetra, a place where religious rituals are performed, is significant because on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead was present on the side of Arjuna. Dhritarashtra, the father of the Kurus, was highly doubtful about the possibility of his son's ultimate victory. In his doubt, he inquired from his secretary Sanjaya, what did they do? He was confident that both his sons and the sons of his younger brother Pandu were assembled in that field of Kurukshetra for a determined engagement of the war. Still, his inquiry is significant. He did not want a compromise between the cousins and he wanted to be sure that the fate of his sons on the battlefield and he wanted to be sure of the fate of his sons on the battlefield. Because the battle was arranged to be fought at Kurukshetra, which is mentioned here, here elsewhere in the Vedas as a place of worship, even for the denizens of heaven, Dhritarashtra became very fearful about the influence of the holy place on the outcome of the battle. He knew very well that this would influence Arjuna and the sons of Pandu favorably, because by nature they were all virtuous. Sanjaya was a student of Vyas, and therefore, by the mercy of Vyas, Sanjaya was able to envision the battlefield of Kurukshetra, even while he was in the room of Dhritarashtra. And so Dhritarashtra asked him about the situation on the battlefield. Both the Pandavas and the sons of Dhritarashtra belong to the same family, but Dhritarashtra's mind is disclosed herein. 
he deliberately claimed only his sons as gurus, and he separated the sons of Pandu from the family heritage. One can thus understand the specific position of Dhritarashtra in his relationship with his nephews, the sons of Pandu. As in the paddy field, the unnecessary plants are taken out, so it is expected from the very beginning of these topics that in the religious field of Kurukshetra, or the father of religion, Sri Krishna, was present. The unwanted plants, like Dhritarashtra's son, Duryodhana, and others, would be wiped out, and the thoroughly religious persons, headed by Yudhishthir, would be established by the Lord. This is the significance of the words Dharmakchetre, Kurukchetre, apart from their historical and Vedic importance. Text 2 Sanjaya Uvacha Drishtva Tupandana <coughs> Drishtva Tupandavani Kang Vyudham Duryodhanastada Acharyam Upasangamya Raja Vachadama Bravit. Sanjaya said, O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana went to his teacher and spoke the following words. Purport Dhritarashtra was blind from birth. Unfortunately, he was also bereft of spiritual vision. He knew very well that his sons were equally blind in the matter of religion, and he was sure that they could never reach an understanding with the Pandavas, who were all pious since birth. Still, he was doubtful about the influence of the place of pilgrimage, and Sanjaya could understand his motive in asking about the situation on the battlefield. Sanjaya wanted, therefore, to encourage the despondent king and thus assured him that his sons were not going to make any sort of compromise under the influence of the holy place. Sanjaya therefore informed the king that his son, Duryodhana, after seeing the military force of the Pandavas, at once went to the commander-in-chief, Dronacharya, to inform him of the real position. Although Duryodhana is mentioned as the king, he still has to go to the commander on account of the seriousness of the situation. He was therefore quite fit to be a politician. But Duryodhana's diplomatic veneer could not disguise the fear he felt when he saw the military arrangement of the Pandavas. Text 3 Pashyaitang Panduputranam Acharya Mahating Chamung Byudham Drupadaputrena Tabashishena Dimata O my teacher, behold the great army of the sons of Pandu, so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple the son of Drupada. Purport Duryodhana, a great diplomat, wanted to point out the defects of Dronacharya, the great Brahmana commander-in-chief. Dronacharya had some political quarrel with King Drupada, the father of Draupadi, who was Arjuna's wife. As a result of this quarrel, Drupada performed a great sacrifice by which he received the benediction of having a son who would be able to kill Dronacharya. Dronacharya knew this perfectly well and yet as a liberal Brahmana he did not hesitate to impart all his military secrets when the son of Drupada, Dristadyumna, was entrusted to him for military education. Now on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Dristadyumna took the side of the Pandavas, and it was he who arranged their military phalanx, after having learned the art 
from Dronacharya. Duryodhana, Duryodhana pointed out this mistake <coughs> of Dronacharya's so that he might be alert and uncompromising in the fighting. By this he wanted to point out that he should not be similarly lenient in battle against the Pandavas, who were also Dronacharya's affectionate students. Arjuna was especially was his most affectionate and brilliant student. Duryodhana also warned that such, that such leniency in the fight would lead to defeat. Text 4 Atra Shura Maheshwasa Bhimarjuna Samayudi Yuyudano Viratascha Drupadascha Maharataha Here in this army are great heroic bowmen, equal in fighting to Bhima and Arjuna, great fighters like Yuyudan, Virat, and Drupada. Purport Even though Drishtadyumna was not a very important obstacle in the face of Dronacharya's very great power in the military art, there were many others who were causes of fear. They are mentioned by Duryodhana as great stumbling blocks on the path of victory because each and every one of them was a formidable, as formidable as Bhima and Arjuna. He knew the strength of Bhima and Arjuna and thus he compared the others with them. Text 5 Vishtiketu Chikitana Kasirajas Chabiryavan Purujit Kuntibojas Cha Shaibjas Cha Narapungavaha There are also great heroic, powerful fighters like Drishtiketu, Chekitana, Kashiraj, Purujit, Kuntiboja, and Shaibya. Text 6 Yudha Manyus Chabikranta Uttamaujas Chabiryavan Sobhadro Draupadeyas Cha Sarva Eva Maharataha There are mighty Yudha Manyu. There are the mighty Yudha Manyu. The very, the very powerful Uttamauja, the son of Subhadra, and the sons of Draupadi. All these warriors are great chariot fighters. Text 7 Asma kam tu vishishta ye tani bodad vijotama nayaka mamasanyasya samgyartam tan brivimite. But for your information, O best of the Brahmanas, let me tell you about the captains who were especially qualified to lead my military force. Text 8 Bhavan Bhishmaschakarnascha Kripascha Samitim Jayaha Ashwatama Vikarnascha Somadatis Tataivacha There are personalities like you, Bhishma, Karna, Kripa, Ashwatthama, Vikarna, and the son of Somadatta, called Burishrava, who were always victorious in battle. Purport Duryodhana mentions the exceptional heroes in the battle, all of whom are ever victorious. Vikarna is the brother of Duryodhana. Ashwatthama is the son of Dronacharya. And Somadati, or Burishrava, is the son of the king of the Balikas. Karna is the half-brother of Arjuna, and he was born of Kunti before her marriage with King Pandu. Kripacharya's twin sister married Dronacharya. Text 9 Anye Chabahabak Shura Madarte Chaktajivitaha Nana Shastra Praharana Sarve Yuda Visharadaha 
there are many other heroes who were prepared to lay down their lives for my sake. All of them are well equipped with different kinds of weapons and all are experienced in military science. Purport As far as the others are concerned, like Jayadrata, Kritavarma and Shalya, all are determined to lay down their lives for Diyodhana's sake. In other words, it is already concluded that all of them would die in the battle of Kurukshetra for joining the party of the sinful Duryodhana. Duryodhana was, of course, confident of his victory on account of the above-mentioned combined strength of his friends. Text 10 Aparyaptam tu asmakam balam bhishma bidakshitam paryaptam fidam etesham balam bhima birakshitam Our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by Grandfather Bhishma, whereas the strength of the Pandavas, carefully protected by Bhima, is limited. Purport Herein is an estimation of comparative strength. Herein an estimation of comparative strength is made by Duryodhana. He thinks that the strength of his armed forces is immeasurable, being specifically protected by the most experienced general, Grandfather Bhishma. On the other hand, the forces of the Pandavas are limited, being protected by the a less experienced general, Bhima, who is like a fig in the presence of Bhishma. Duryodhana was always envious of Bhima because he knew perfectly well that if he should die at all, he would, he would only be killed by Bhima. But at the same time, he was confident of his victory on account of the presence of Bhishma, who was a far superior general. His, conclu his, conclusion, that he would, his conclusion that he would come out of the battle victorious was well ascertained. Text 11 Ayaneshu chasarveshu yatam bhagam mavastitaha bishmam eva bidakshantu bhavantak sarva eva hi. All of you must now give full support to Grandfather Bhishma as you stand at your respective strategic points of entrance into the phalanx of the army. Purport. Duryodhana, after praising the prowess of Bhishma, further considered that others might think that they had been considered less important. So in his usual diplomatic way, he tried to adjust the situation in the above words. He emphasized that Bhishma Dev was undoubtedly the greatest hero, but he was an old man, so everyone must especially think of his protection from all sides. He might become engaged in the fight and the enemy might take advantage of his full engagement on one side. Therefore it is important that other heroes not leave their strategic positions and allow the enemy to break the phalanx. Duryodhana clearly felt that the victory of the Kurus depended on the presence of Vishpadev. He was confident of the full support of Bhishma Dev and Dronacharya in the battle because he knew very well that they did not even speak a word when Arjuna's wife Draupadi in her helpless condition had appealed to them for justice while, while she was being forced to appear naked in the presence of all the great generals in the assembly. Although he knew that the two generals had some sort of affection for the Pandavas. He hoped that these generals would now completely give it up as they had done during the gambling performances. Text 12 <clears throat> 
tasya sanjayanam harsham kuru vidak pitamaha singanadam vinad vinad yochai shankham dadmau pratapavan Then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire of the Kuru dynasty, the grandfather of the fighters, blew his conch shell very loudly, making a sound like the roar of a lion, giving Duryodhana joy. Purport. The grandsire of the Kuru dynasty could understand the inner meaning of the heart of his grandson, Duryodhana. And out of his natural compassion for him, he tried to cheer him by blowing his conch shell very loudly, befitting his position as a lion. Indirectly, by the symbolism of the conch shell, he informed his depressed grandson, Duryodhana, that he, that he had no chance of victory in the battle because the Supreme Lord Krishna was on the other side. But still, it was his duty to conduct the fight, and no pains would be spared in that connection. Text 13 Tetak Shankash Chabaryas Cha Pavana Nakago Mukaha Sahasai Bhavyahanyanta Sashabdas Tumalo Bhavat after that, the conch shells, drums, bugles, trumpets, and horns were all suddenly sounded, and the combined sound was tumultuous. Text 14 Tetak Shwe Tire Harayar Tetak Shwe Tire Hayar Yukte Mahati Syandane Stitao Madavak Pandavas Chaiva Divyao Shankau Padadmatuhu. On the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna, stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses, sounded their transcendental conch shells. Purport. In contrast with the conch shell blown by Bhishma Dev, the conch shells in the hands of Krishna in Arjuna are described as transcendental. The sounding of the transcendental conch shells indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side because Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. Jayas tu pandu putranam yesham pakshe janardanaha Victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu because Lord Krishna is associated with them. And whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the Goddess of Fortune is also, is also there because the Goddess of Fortune never li lives alone without her husband. Therefore, victory and fortune were awaiting Arjuna as indicated by the transcendental sound produced by the conch shell of Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Besides that, the chariot on which both the friends were seated had been donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna. And this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. Text 15 Panchajanyam Rishikisho Devadattam Dananjayaha Poundram Dadmau Mahashankam Bhima Karma Rikodadaha Lord Krishna blew his conch shell called Panchajanya. Arjuna blew his, the Devadatta, and Bhima, the, the voracious eater and performer of Herculean tasks, blew his terrific conch shell called Pondra. Purport. Lord Krishna is referred to as Rishikesha in this verse because he is the owner of all senses. The living entities are part and parcel of him and therefore the senses of the living entities are also part and parcel of his senses. 
the impersonalists cannot account for the senses of the living entities and therefore they are always anxious to describe all living entities as senseless or impersonal. The Lord, situated in the hearts of all living entities, directs their senses, but He directs in terms of the surrender of the living entity, and in the case of a pure devotee, He directly controls the senses. Here on the battlefield, battlefield of Kurukshetra, the Lord directly controls the transcendental senses of Arjuna, and thus his particular name of Rishikesha. The Lord has different names according to his different activities. For example, his name is Madhusudana because he killed the demon of the name Madhu. His name is Govinda because he gives pleasure to the cows and to the senses. His name is Vasudeva because he appeared as the son of Vasudeva. His name is Devakinandana because he awarded his childhood pastimes to Yashoda. I'm sorry. His name is Devakinandana because he accepted Devaki as his mother. His name is Yashoda Nandana because he awarded his childhood pastimes to Yashoda in Vrindavan. His name is Parthasarati because he worked as charioteer of his friend Arjuna. Similarly, his name is Rishikesha, Rishikesha because he gave direction to Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Arjuna is referred to as Dhananjaya in this verse because he helped his elder brother in fetching wealth when it was required by the king to make expenditures for different sacrifices. Similarly, Bhima is known as Rikodara Rikodara, because he could eat as voraciously as he could perform Herculean tasks, such as killing the demon Hidimba. So the particularly the, so the particular types of conch shell blown by the different personalities on the side of the Pandavas, beginning with the lords, were all very encouraging to the fighting soldiers. On the other side, there were no such credits, nor the presence of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Director, nor that of the Goddess of Fortune. So they were predestined to lose the battle, and that was the message announced by the sounds of the conch shells. Texts 16 through 18. <clears throat> Ananta Vijayam Raja Kunti Putro Yudhishthiraha Nakulak Sahadevascha Sugosha Manipushpakao Kashyas Chaparameshwasa Chikandi Cha Maharataha Dristadyum no Viratascha Satyakish Chaparajitaha Drupado Dropadeyascha Sarvashak Pritibi Pate Saubhadras chap mahabahu sukan dadmu pritak pritak. King Yudhishthir, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Ananta Vijay, and Nakula and Sahadev blew the Sugosha and Manipushpaka. That great archer, the king of Kashi, the great fighter Shikandi, Dristadyumna, Virat, the unconquerable Satyaki, Drupada, the sons, of Dr the sons of Draupadi, and others. O king, such as the mighty armed son of Subhadra, all blew their respective conch shells. Purport Sanjaya informed King Dhritarashtra very tactfully that his unwise po policy of deceiving the sons of Pandu and endeavoring to enthrone his own sons on the seat of the kingdom was not very laudable. The signs already clearly indicated that the whole Kuru dynasty would be killed in that great battle. Beginning with the grandsire, Bhishma, down to the grandsons like Abhimanyu and others, 
including kings from many states of the world, all were present there and all were doomed. The whole catastrophe was due to King Dhritarashtra because he encouraged the policy followed by his sons. Text 19 Sagosho dartarashtranam vridayani vyadarayat navascha pritiving chaiva putumulo vyananadayan. The blowing of these different conch shells became uproarious, vibrating both in the sky and on the earth. It shattered the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra. Purport. When Bhishma and the others on the side of Duryodhana blew their respective conch shells, there was no heartbreaking on the part of the Pandavas. Such occurrences are not mentioned. But in this particular verse, it is mentioned that the hearts of the sons of Dhritarashtra were shattered by the sounds vibrated by the Pandavas' party. This is due to the Pandavas and their confidence in Lord Krishna. One who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord has nothing to fear, even in the midst of the greatest calamity. Text 20 Eta vyavastitan drishtva dartarastran kapi dvajaha pavrite shastra sampate danur ujyam vyapandava Rishikesham tada bakyam idam aha mahipate. At that time, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with Hanuman, took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows. O king, after looking at the son of Dhritarashtra, drawn in military array, Arjuna then spoke to Lord Krishna these words. Purport <clears throat> Purport <clears throat> The battle was just about to begin. It is understood from the above statement that the son of Dhritarashtra were more or less disheartened by the unexpected arrangement of military force by the Pandavas, who were guided by the direct instructions of Lord Krishna on the battlefield. The emblem of Hanuman on the flag of Arjuna is another sign of victory because Hanuman cooperated with Lord Rama in the battle between Rama and Ravana. And Lord Rama emerged victorious. Now both Rama and Hanuman were present on the chariot of Arjuna to help him. Lord Krishna is Rama himself and wherever Lord Rama is, his eternal servitor Hanuman and his eternal consort Sita, the goddess of fortune, are present. Therefore Arjuna had no cause to fear any enemies whatsoever. And above all, the Lord of the senses, Lord Krishna, was personally present to give him direction. Thus, all good counsel was available to Arjuna in the matter of executing the battle. In such auspicious conditions, in such auspicious conditions, arranged by the Lord for his eternal devotee, lay the signs of assured victory. Text 21 and 22 Arjuna Ubacha Senayor Ubayor Madye Ratang Stapaya Mechuta Yabat Eitan Yedikshe Ham Yodhu Kaman Avastitan Kair Maya Zahayodav Yam Asmin Rana Samudyame Arjuna said, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see those present here 
who desire to fight and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. Purport Although Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy he was engaged in the service of his friend. He never fails in his affection for his devotees and thus he is addressed herein as infallible. As charioteer, he had to carry out the orders of Arjuna and since he did not hesitate to do so, he is addressed as infallible. Although he had accepted the position of a charioteer for his devotee, his supreme position was not challenged. In all circumstances, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Rishikesh, the Lord of the Total Senses. The relationship between the Lord and His Servitor is very sweet and transcendental. The Servitor is always ready to render service to the Lord, and similarly, the Lord is always seeking an, an opportunity to render some service to the devotee. He takes greater pleasure in his pure devotees assuming the advantageous position of ordering him than he does in being the giver of orders. Since he is master, everyone is under his orders and no one is above him to order him. But when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him, he obtains transcendental pleasure, although he is the infallible master in all circumstances. As a pure devotee of the Lord, Arjuna had no desire to fight with his cousins, but he was forced to come onto the battlefield by the obstinacy of Duryodhana, who was never agreeable to any peaceful negotiation. Therefore, he was very anxious to see who the leading persons present on the battlefield were. Although there was no question of a peacemaking endeavor, on the battlefield. He wanted to see them again and to see how much they were bent on demanding an unwanted war. And it's 8, 8.03. We'll stop there. It's a nice stopping place. Mm. We'll, we'll start tomorrow at text 23. Hare Krishna. So nice to hear the Bhagavad Gita read straight through, isn't it? I'm, I'm holding my tongue not to comment along the way because I really am attached to hearing uh, the Gita you know, straight through. Hare Krishna. Okay. If there's any uh, points that were that, that stuck in the mind or that st stood out, please, please um, let us know. Hare Krishna. First up is a comment from Bhakta Mohan. Bhakta Mohan. Hare Krishna. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj and assembled devotees. Hare Krishna to you. And from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Bo Gopakanya Devi Dasi. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada and your daily reading service of Sri the Prabhupada's books, Maharaj. All glories to his divine grace. Hare Krishna to all the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna, thank you. From Rati Nanjari. Hare Bo Rati. <coughs> he says, Jai Guru Maharaj, our transcendental satellite. Transcendental what? Satellite. Satellite. Okay. Bimiam. From Bhakta Matsu. Haribo Bhakta Matsu. Jai, obeisances Maharaj, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai, 
course to Prabhupada. From Bhakta Rupa. Haribo Bhakta Rupa. He says, Jai Maharaj, thank you for reading this evening. This would be an amazing scene in a movie. The blowing of the conch shells sounds so epic and atmospheric. Oh, yes. It's amazing that just from the blowing of the conches alone uh, indicated that the whole Kuru dynasty would be killed. Yes. It reminds me of how when the New Zealand rugby team do their Maori war dance <laughs> called the Haka before a match and you see the opposition shrink <laughs> and hearts sink before going on to lose the rugby game. Hare Krishna. Yes, I mean, in all combat, in all sports, in all combat, there's always the psychological edge, you know, of the team that is actually the most uh, enlivened, the most together, the most enthusiastic, the most desirous. And when you have Krishna on your side like that physically, standing on the chariot, it's, it's, it's already a done deal. <laughs> I'm not sure of how many people, how many personalities on the battlefield actually understood that from the beginning. But uh, anyway, we'll get to the the reality in the eleventh chapter later on. Just how done deal it was. <laughs> and also, you know, when Krishna, anything that's connected with Krishna especially things that are physically, you know, connected with Krishna, like his conch shell. <clears throat> when he blows that conch shell, the sound is not different than him. And those devotees who are pure in their love for Krishna, their, the sound of their can, conch shells are identical. And therefore, there's no, there's no hope for the, for the sons of Dhritarashtra. And they know it. But this is the, the Chatriya code. There are actually codes in the Vedas of behavior, even in military activity, wars and stuff. And, you know, when, when, a, when warriors are there and they're being challenged, they can't, it's their duty, they can't uh, they have to give it their all. Either the, the other person dies or they die, and it's clear who's the winner. And we'll notice, anyway, we won't, we won't hear so much about the battle, but during the battle, as each one of the the head, the, the, the chief, like Bhishma, Dronacharya, and these personalities, as, e as each one of them is killed, you know, the strength goes down and the the atmosphere goes down and the spirits, the esprit de corps, that's what they call it, esprit de corps in uh, military, it's a military term, you know, it decreases. Key to everything, cooperation. You cooperate with Krishna, and you come out winner no matter what. No matter how the odds are against them. Try to understand that remember Krishna <clears throat> gave the choice to Arjuna whether they, he, they, he could have him or his army. Krishna's army was no joke. It was like the most powerful army in, uh, ever. But without Krishna in front of it, it's not the same. Hare Krishna. And next is from Anandamurti Devi Dasi. Jai Anandamurti Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Today I was feeling gratitude to Sri the Prabhupada because if Sri the Prabhupada didn't 
translate this transcendental Bhagavad Gita, I would never have known these transcendental truths and glories of Sri Krishna and the great devotee Arjuna. Yes, absolutely. All of us are dependent on Srila Prabhupada for delivering the message of the Gita without compromise and without uh, personal motive. Simply for the benefit of the whole human population. Ultimate service. This is from Bhakta Mohan. Adibo Bhakta Mohan. He says, Does face to face realization of Krishna come before giving Krishna the greater pleasure of ordering him? No, that you can't limit Krishna like that. Krishna can do whatever he wants, he can inspire anybody to do anything they want. You don't have to come face to face with Krishna. There's a purport later on in which Krishna, in which Srila Prabhupada discusses this point. There's a doubt in people's hearts. You know, if, when Krishna is present, then we're sure. And when Krishna is not present, then how can, we, how can we be sure? How can we get proper direction? And Prabhupada says, if you take Krishna's direction, the sound from the Bhagavad Gita, then you're sure. Personal present may be there or may not be there, but the presence in sound is always there. Therefore, this Bhagavad Gita is so powerful and so popular, actually, after so many years, 5,000 years. Very rare that a personality is so well-known, you know, and a, and a text is so well known after that many years. Even the Bible, the Koran, the Koran is recent compared to the Bhagavad Gita. The Bible also. Buddhist sutras also. This is, this is the real deal. This is actually Gita, the song. Bhagavad Gita, the song of God. It is non different than Krishna. So there doesn't have to be, you know, face to face. Uh, contact before something else can happen. Hare Krishna. Instru Krishna is absolute. His instructions uh, are as powerful as Him. His ho holy name is as powerful as Him. Nam Nam Akadi Bahuda Nijasarva Shaktis All of His energy, full energy, he imparts to his holy name. When Lord Chaitanya came and chanted, anybody who heard it became completely pure immediately. And then when that person went to his own village and other people heard him, they became pure. This was this. This is the process of uh, parampara. We're getting the holy name from Prabhupada, and it's only nine or ten persons removed from Lord Chaitanya. In other words, between Lord Chaitanya, you know, chanting the holy name and going into an ear of his immediate disciples, the six Goswamis, and on down in generations, it's only ten generations to Srila Prabhupada. So the same principle is happening. The Krishna consciousness movement is spreading and people are taking the chanting. Uh, that, that comes from the potency of Lord Chaitanya's chanting. Just like the conch shell of Krishna. Assured victory. So we may, we may think because of our material calculation and our material conceptions that we need this or we need that. But Krishna can do anything. He's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But He waits for the soul to approach Him 
in the proper attitude before he'll give the soul full uh, protection and full uh, reciprocation. Hare Krishna. From Daitari Hari Das. Jai Daitari Hari Das. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thanks for tonight. Uh, thanks for reading tonight. There are so many things that stuck out tonight. For one, it's interesting how Duryodhana seems proud that people are willing to die for him, but later we'll hear Arjuna is horrified by the same idea. Mm. I wonder if Bhishma also got sick of hearing him speak and blew the conch shell to put a stop to it. <laughs> Speculation. Not exactly to make, not to shut him up, but just to assure him that he was going to give his all. That's what our Acharyas say. To assure Duryodhana that he was going to give his all. He's not going to hold back because the Pandavas are dear to him. It also stands out in this first chapter how much Krishna Kata there is in the purports. Krishna's different names, forms, and relationships with different devotees and his nature are all described in detail. Yes. I was wondering on the point in the very beginning that if one hears the Gita without motivated inter interpretation, one surpasses all studies of the world. I really love hearing the Gita, but feel I'm still way off being able to get the full benefit of hearing it properly because I'm still full of material things. I pray for your blessings that I can one day really hear the Gita. Well, Srila Prabhupada addresses this in his purports, in, uh, in all of his books, that, if, that we're, meant, we're meant to hear this again and again. And we're not scholars. H hardly anyone is a is a, is a real scholar. Gopi Pranadhanapal was a real scholar. There's very, very few uh, scholars like that in the movement, in the world even. Uh, but repeated hearing will bring purification of the heart and mind. Like you're saying, all these things that are there make it harder to hear properly. So the hearing purifies and it gives the understanding more and more the more you hear so we should never stop hearing the Gita Prabhupada says it directly I can't I don't have the quote at the top of my head but I wrote it in one of my offerings in recent years Prabhupada said you should never stop hearing the Gita reading the Gita From Bhakta Mohan, he says, Hari Bo Maharaj, thank you for distributing these rays from the benediction through Parampara, benediction moon through Parampara. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, everyone. This is really special to me. I've been hearing the Gita ever since I touched the Gita 49 years ago. Uh, it's been my guiding light and most in, in, it's inspirational uh, book ever. So this is a great opportunity for us to read it clearly, uh, cover to cover, for uh, posterity, for future generations of Vaishnavas. Bhagavad Gita, as it is, ki jai. Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol Thank you very much See you tomorrow night Same time, same place Same topic The unfolding of the instructions Of Krishna to Arjuna In the Bhagavad Gita As it is Hari Krishna, see you tomorrow <laughs>